Um, hey, what's up? Chris Lambert. Who do you remember about the day? <laughs> hmm. You know, this leads up to, this is like 30 years in the making, right? Truly, because it leads up, it starts with, uh, really starts with Tim Tino and John PC. You know John PC, a professional biker. Tim okay. Tino was a, a gnarly uh, a skateboarder from Carlsbad. Always heard that these guys tr jumped it. You know what I mean? Jumped down it or something. And, and PC broke his ankles, he says. Always stories, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but then going to school there, we were always so, eating. So just a little background. This is the San Diego double San set. San Diego double right, set. Right here I went to high school. This okay. is where I went to high school, man. And it's yeah. neatest, man. So it was, just, it was always something that we looked at. I mean, and then it turns into, you know, PC was was living with uh, Frank Carrada and Steve Olson at the time. So we would always see these guys. This is my history class way up here. And so we'd always see these guys <laughs> walking through the field like during school, right? In yeah. 1992 or something, 1991 or something. And, and it was John PC that kind of had the, the thought of he tried to jump it. That's what we heard. And he lived with those guys. And so these guys were all legendary around the area, right? When we were kids. And um, foundation skateboards, obviously, and and John PC was the biker that hung with the skaters that did the skater stuff on mm -hmm. a bike, okay. you know. And so he, anyways, and then and then and then it turns in, and then you know that goes by for years. Nobody, we always heard, but always in the back of my mind because I was a long tramp kid, so I would always jump high stuff or something. That was just because I, my dad built too big of a long tramp for me, and I had to learn how to jump off stuff high or something, and. And whatever, he, then years go by, and then you know a couple years go by, and the flip guys come into town, and Jeff Rowley makes a freaking huge impact on all of us and the flip guys, and then you know he's going spot to spot, and of course in the back of my mind, like the biggest thing around here is this, and he's jumping everything, and then we hear he jumps, tries to jump it with Sturt or something, but he like breaks his ankle or something, you know, it's a big deal, and. So that was in the back of my mind. Now it's like that, like what, dude? Because I'm already jumping everything around Encinitas, but this was always the biggest thing, you know? Yeah. And then, whatever, man. And then, then years go by, turns into, we start Expedition up and I'm like ending my video part off and I'm, well, it's years, actually years in the make, but takes some months for us to film. We're doing the filming process and I try to jump it. And a lot of the times it didn't work out. I landed on the bottom stairs, you know, it was like four or five sessions, right? And I would always call up the boys, right? Or I would go out with, I would go out with Lee DuPont because he just got this fit camera and we would set it up all solo style. And he has all the footage, that fucker, and he would never shows it. I don't know if he ever got, he says he got rid of it all or mm. something mm. all of my footage that I had like five or six different sessions of jumping down this damn thing he has it all on footage I tried to get a hold of him the other day just to be like let's see if that footage and he's never got a hold of me about it and, and he's a friend of mine that him and I are like brothers so I love him like a brother but at the same time he's holding on to my footage and I'm like what the fuck but it's his footage but yeah it's a cold epic and um anyways I tried to jump it boom 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 and then Lee's filming for freaking Zero and all those guys, and then he, Jamie hears about it, and then it turns into some kind of a thing, because he hears about it, didn't I, didn't pull it. And then this guy tries to do it, and I love Jamie too, because I go back with him 20 years since experience skateboards, you know? So I know Jamie, so we all know each other, so it's always this push, right? Yeah. Lee's freaking pushing these cats while he's filming, trying to get other dudes to try to do it. it Cause I didn't do it, maybe I don't know, and so it turned into some personal thing. So you're filming for expedition, <laughs> and then and look at I'm hey, you want me to tell the story? I'm telling you that like the real deal, right? Yeah. And and then, yo, I just keep on filming. I hear Lee was not doing this. I got all bummed out. Him and I are like, I'm, you know, now I'm like, I wish I could hang out that cat and talk about this stuff. Then uh, and then uh. I get a hold of, you know, Ty and John, because I'm filming with John Holland all the time, and then, like, Grant and, you know, uh, Grant and, uh, and Swift collab with this right here, and they got a hold of me, and they said, look, I'm going to take this photo, and I went down there and jumped that thing, and, uh, 
I landed it, and then Swift calls me and says, yo, something happened and the, the lighting was off or something. Can we do it the next week? Like, can we try it again next week? And I'm like, oh, right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Dude, this took like eight or nine sessions, right? And it took a long time of nightmare. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And me getting all personal with friends. And it, I mean, it took into it. It was a real deal thing, right? In the life of me or something. Sure. And uh, still to this day. And uh, it's kind of funny because it gets brought up still. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, um, and anyways, I went back the next week and I think I did it like first try or something, which was weird, you know? And it was rad because I have every one of these times I have these rad people that were with me. Like one of the sessions that I didn't land it, this kid Merced that's, you know, ain't, ain't with us no more, but he, but he was, he let me borrow his wheels and, and I almost did it. And that would have been the session, but you know, but the next session, you know, there's all these little kids that now are like older that see me and I'm like, what dude, you're like my, you were there or something, yeah. you know? Yeah, and yeah. I think Mumford was there at yeah. one of these sessions. Mike Peterson was at one of the sessions. I think the one that I landed. Oh. Mm -hmm. Alf was always there. Alf was like always my my freaking he would rock. He'd pick me up, yo, yeah. and he'd beat me up, get me back up there, you know. And uh, yeah, it was so, sick, man. I mean, it was a big big deal. And then when I landed it, I was psyched because I hey, it was Ty Evans footage and John Holland's footage, and it was sick. And, yeah. And then the second time I did it, Mavis climbed up on the top of this freaking the light and filmed it from top and. It worked out pretty cool, you know? I was psyched and it turned into this like, you know, I don't mean to bring, I'm, I'm bringing other skaters up because this was a deal in my head. Yeah. And it came all from love, but it, then it came from competitiveness because competitiveness is what we grew up with with skateboarding. Sure. Castle, NSA, yeah, the whole deal, right? Uh, secret footage, the whole deal. It was just a thing. Yeah. Your footage gets out, it's gonna get freaking leaked out. You're gonna freaking get taken if you don't fucking do it. What did you, <laughs> what did you think when uh, Milton lip slid it? I thought that he was superhuman or something. But you know, years before that, Muska, I remember, looked at the top. We were, at, we were with Muska when he 50 the other rail over here. Okay. And he looked at it and was all, someone's gonna 50 it. And he was all looking at it. And we were like, oh, and then we, we start looking at it. And then he was like looking at it like that back then, wow. you know, in the toy machine days. Yeah. And he was like, it's going to get 50 before Gnarly. anybody rolled it, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah. And then it just, uh, that was just a workout, dude. I worked out a lot for it, you know, because I tried to get my legs yeah. all ready. Yeah. <laughs> Who's, uh, whose copy of the magazine was that? That's, that's Mark Waters right there. Um, I just realized that just a second ago. Yeah, it got me all teary eyed because, yeah, he was one of the first people to, to ever take photos of me. Ah, awesome. Yeah, yeah at, at uh, Pacific View. Right, okay. Yeah, for a GIA brochure when I was like 14. Awesome. Good Times Intelligence Agency. Yeah, Greg Witt. Graham Stanners. Yeah, and Greg Witt. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't know. It's a 13 years old, maybe. You know what I mean? And, and, and that, you know, he was always down to hook, hook yeah, us up. Yeah, yeah. Kids, even right. And yeah. So it's a special magazine. I think I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. That's rad. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That's rad. What's going on, people? I'm Dave Swift. Uh, I was the editor in chief of Transworld Skateboarding for about 15 years. Photographer too, so I got to do a lot of stuff in the 90s. Well, I've got this cover. This is known as the Y2K cover. Kids don't know what Y2K no. is, but when there's a turn of the century, it was going to get crazy. The computers were going to take over. It was just going to be the end of days, man. So people had to go big. So therefore, we have Chris Lambert. Yep. Um, Ollie in the double set, which was a gigantic double set. Which is at which? San Diego High School. There you go. It's now called San Diego Academy. Um, so yeah, Chris Lambert. Um, he had tried this a few times. I want to say this was the third time because I know I had shot there one other time. We shot probably seven rolls of film for sequences. I was on this double set laying down with a fisheye. Okay. So. He landed on several, probably landed on each roll at least one time, landed and just smash into the ground. Like just sort of flying out, like shoes off, everything, just bad time. Yeah. Um, and it probably was another 
three or four months before we went back. And it was right at the time that we started on this Y2K issue. Um, and I think maybe this time it took him like two or three rolls. So I shot a couple stills of him getting there. So this, this one right here is probably not actually the make. Like he didn't land on this, this exact one and roll away because I have a sequence where he landed, board broke, and he still rode. He didn't like stop. Board sm snapped in half and he kept going. Um, so it's kind of like a parachute. A board break parachute, we call that. Um, but in those days, like, because we were shooting film, like, and we didn't know if we had got a still or whatever the deal was, we would shoot a number of stills while the guy was trying it. And if he landed it during those 10, 10 tries, then we would just shoot a sequence after. Um, or if he felt like he'd landed it good enough, and then you, then you just started shooting sequences, you know, because it was like, all right, he's gonna do it on this try. Sometimes he did it on the next try, sometimes it took another eight rolls. And this time, three rolls, good to go. So the other person that I knew that had tried to ollie this was Jeff Rowley. Maybe a year before, like around the same time, but I think he'd kind of given up on it like by the time Chris did it. But what's rad about this is that Chris is from Encinitas. He went to San Diego. And those guys were, you know, the ESP guys, you know, Encinitas Skate Posse. Yeah. Were the guys that skated San Diego all the time, you know, they were like the locals at San Diego High School, skated all the spots in the high school. Um, so it's rad that Chris made it because he was from the town. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Um, and, the, and the issue that I'm holding in my hand was mailed out to one Mark Waters, who uh, recently passed away from complications of COVID. Um, Mark actually was my roommate for about a year in Carlsbad. Mark uh, did some zines. He was originally from San Jose. Uh, did your time at Transworld overlap? Yes. Yeah. Mark worked for me for a while at Transworld. Um, so like, well, he worked. We worked together for a while, and then towards the end of him working at Transworld, I was his boss. So you know, we were both photographers. Both got on the road a lot. You know, he did his trips, I did my trips. But yeah, you marked the way back. Um, sorry to see him go, but it's kind of cool that this issue has was actually once his. As I as I mentioned earlier, the sequence of the ollie. You know, not many people shoot a lot of ollies, but this was a pretty big one at the time, uh, late 1999. And then the board break and the ride away continues. Yep. Pretty sick. Good job, Chris. What's your favorite uh, magazine cover from back in the day? Um, I think it's uh, it's probably there's that Dune cover of him kick flipping in Venice over the flat gap. Yeah. For some reason, it's always been in my head about a, a, a cover. Yeah, we think. And it's not the biggest thing, and it's not the craziest thing, but it's like the, the layout's awesome. The layout's awesome. The cover, I think it had some colors down the side oh, or yeah, something. Yeah, rainbow. And, I don't know, it's just like the fish eye up in his face maybe, like it's taken from up here. I don't know, it's just a weird cover and it always stuck out to me. Awesome, <laughs> yeah. yeah.